What's up, y'all? This your boy Thizzle, and right now, you're watching Wado Radio Backstage. Everybody lives in ear. I want to thank you in advance for letting us make it clear to y'all on the Wado Radio Show. Yeah, man. DJ Wado here. This was over here throwing up gang signs, man. We nah, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't gang sign. That was uh, that was Jesus peace. That's Jesus peace. The J and the peace sign. Yeah, the fans, the fans that eat you up on that joint. And I stack them things like Young Thug on her and Bird, man. I'm nah, just like, this. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm good, man. You they good? got me in the small seat, man. I'm in the small seat, it's good. Wade looking taller than me. But it's straight though. We good. We good. We look we looking like a gang truce right now. We we are looking like a gang truce right now. <laughs> Yo, how many how many legacies is this for you? You've been here since the beginning, all right? I've been here since it was called uh Heavyweights? Heavyweights. You've been since heavyweights? Yeah. They just started letting me talk though. They ain't let me talk at first. <laughs> I was just there support. They just started letting me talk like Two, three years ago. But yeah, I, I was at heavyweights, man. They had yeah. the breakfast of champions. Yeah. Deuce was teaching. I was nodding off sleep. Me and Flame <laughs> was up all night. Yeah, I was in here since the jump. Man, that's good, brother. That's good, man. So how you been though, man? Man, I've been good, man. Like, man, life is life has been crazy. It's been crazy. And good at the same time. So it's been good, man. I'm What's that I'm what's that mean, man? I done had a bunch of trials. But I got a bunch of stuff, other stuff happening. You know, that's a bunch good. of doors opening, a bunch of stuff working. So yeah, it's good, man. Life that's good. is good. So let's talk about your record, man. New record. Let's talk about the new record. Yeah. Is it is this date still August 14th? August 14th. August Same 14th. day as straight out of Compton. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I might just go to the movie theater and perform it live, you know what I'm saying, at the theater. <laughs> Dude behind the camera like, yo, that'll be crazy. <laughs> Hey, I'm saying the people going to straight out of Compton would probably appreciate that's that the content. Fan base, though. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. That's yeah. what I'm saying, man. Yeah, but August 14th, man, it's still dropping, man. Yeah. What's the what's the what's the what's the concept and the whole move behind it, man? Man, the name of the record is Heavy as the Head, as in Heavy as the Head that wears the crown. So the title kind of came from, you know, my mindset after like Ferguson and Baltimore yeah. and different other stuff. Yeah. You know, as an artist, it's easy to see what's happening in the world and write it off and keep moving. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to offend your fan base or you don't want to lose no sales or shows. But for me, I just like it's it's harder for me to do that because I felt this burden. Like I always felt like God put me in a certain space to, you know, have a voice. So when this stuff was happening, I felt like God put me in this space to have a voice. He gave me a burden for that stuff. And. And that's kind of where the title came from because it's just like, yo, like heavy is the head that wear the crown. The person that God put in that position to be able to, you know what I'm saying, speak into a culture, like that's it's weight come with that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't nothing small that I take light. So that's kind of where the title came from. You know, one of the things, man, that I, I was like so encouraged during the whole Ferguson thing, man, was just seeing video of you out in the street. Yeah. Really getting involved with the people. Like it like it's one thing to kind of talk about stuff on social media. It's one thing to uh you know, tweet, do go on interviews and yeah. this is what we should be doing or even write blogs. Yeah. And that stuff is good. Like don't yeah, get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, like it's needed. Like the commu like listen, the reality is we know about a lot of this stuff because of social media. Yeah. But I think it's another thing to go out into the community and to be an advocate for change. And to help keep the peace, man. And and yeah. you know, seeing you do that, man, like I always had a, a healthy respect for you, but it went up a whole other notch. Yeah, that was one of the things that that kind of drug drove that into my heart and mind. Yeah, because I wanted to go to the crib. I wanted yeah. to be, you know, I had I was still pushing Fallen King at that yeah. point. You was about to do a tour. I was about to do a tour. Yeah, I had the Dream Team video was done. We were mm. about to put it out. So I, I held that video to December because of that. Mm. It didn't come out till New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. So it was just so much stuff that I put on hold. Like we canceled the tour stuff. Yeah. It was it was so much stuff that we put on hold and canceled because it was like, yo, I, I can't go out on the tour right now because stuff is probably finna go crazy. Yeah. So if I'm out on the tour and stuff go crazy, I'm like, I'ma feel whack. You, you know feel what I'm horrible. saying? So yeah. I was like, we ain't doing no tour. I ain't putting this video out. And and I spent as much time as I could being out in the street, you know, yeah. and like trying to keep peace and communicating with people and, and building relationships, you know, so like, P 
people would know that I it ain't just talk that I really do care about them. You know, I'm out here trying to see, make sure they all right. But that yeah. that's what it was, man. That's where and some of the, a lot of the music, like a, a lot of the music on the record came from that stuff. Like, but it, it, it didn't come from what people would naturally think, you know. So I got this record called Lord Help Me with this sample in it. And uh hearing the commentary, you know, of uh, over and over again, the different analysts and different people like, oh, they're it's because of fatherless homes and it's because of this mm-hmm. and it's because of blah blah blah. And so on this this Lord Help Me record, I just kind of just like went, you know, and it's just like, man, like you know, we know our them jails got our daddies in them. We know them. You know, we know them graves got our brothers in them. Like we know all this stuff y'all saying about us. Like help us come up with some solutions. Mm. You know, so I I took different angles on records, but I just went in the studio, man, and just just went. And part of the reason I wanted to do it's gonna be a mixtape and a paid version. Yeah. So part of the reason I wanted to do a mixtape was because when when the Ferguson situation happened, I I noticed that there weren't as many people around that I wanted to communicate with, mm. meaning like the listeners, yeah, yeah you know? Yeah. So I was like, right now, I, I like I wanted to communicate with them. And, and there were people like that that follow me, you know, that I, I felt like needed to hear what the Lord's put on my heart. So I was like, man, I'm gonna do something to, to get in, in people's mix. So I'm, I'm gonna take it to them. I'm gonna take, you know, what I've been giving to them and for free, you know? So that's why it's a mixtape and a paid version. Uh, because I know my fans, they're gonna want to support. You know, make sure the the mission keep going, and and I'm gonna be taking CDs to the street. Yeah, and making sure I connect with people. Yeah, you know, offering yeah. their hope. Yeah, it's good. You always took CDs to the street, man. That's yeah. You know, because it, that's where that's where the people at. Yeah. You know, that's Jesus went out. He ain't just go chill in the synagogue. Like nah, Jesus he definitely went out did. in the block. <laughs> he definitely Jesus did. went to the block and did fish fries. <laughs> Jesus was hood, bro. You don't do fish fries unless you hood. Like Jesus went and did fish fries, bro, in the hood. Like, yo, get to break the fish out and deep fry. With the fried fish sandwiches, bro. <laughs> you heard me so man. That's what it is, man. Like my heart, like I, I make I, I make music for three people. I make music one for myself. So we ain't talking about God. You know, people, I make music for God to glorify the Lord. So I make music for myself. I make music that I would want to hear if I was in a situation. I'm thinking about the old me, you know, when I say myself. I make music for the church so I could shed a light on situations that they don't always see. And I make music for people that in the hood, on the block, in a jail cell, you know, in the group home that that don't know no hope, they don't know Jesus, they don't know nothing, and and so that's always been my mission. And if I'm a, if I'm gonna reach those people, you got to take it to them sometimes. Yeah, they ain't yeah. they ain't popping up in the church. Nah, they definitely not just popping up in the church. Yeah, man. it's 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 funny, man. Like um, one of the conversations I've been having a lot recently is around apologetics and a lot of the misconceptions that when you're in the inner city context people have about Christianity. You know, yeah. Christianity is a white man's religion. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that whole piece, man. Um, man, just, just I, 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 there's a video, I think you was in London, bro. Yeah, London, talking to this Muslim. Yeah, yeah. man, I love that joint, yeah. dog. It's crazy you just mentioned what you just said, though, too, because my class that I just taught at Legacy yeah. was about Ferguson, Baltimore, and the church. You know, so I talked about a lot of what you just said in the class, like telling people since Ferguson there has been this uprising of Afrocentric teaching. And and when you you go to the like, I think one of the main uh, devices of Satan with all of the racial stuff that's popping up is a lot of people kept saying, ah, this is this is just going to divide us. And I'm like, yo, we're already divided as a church. Like the church is divided already. We're divided as a country. The church is definitely divided in a lot of ways. Satan doesn't need our help with that. But I think one of the main things that that uh, Satan is is doing with this is to is to stop the flow of the gospel into the inner city. Mm. You know, because now the people in the inner city they have that's their defense. Oh, that's white man stuff. You know, and and the Afrocentric teachers are going in and they're teaching that. I was just at a meeting the other day. Farrakhan came to St. Louis, right? And so they they had this private meeting where they invited out the young influential people in the city. Yeah. So I got a personal phone. They trying to rally support for yeah. that million man march. Yeah. So I got a personal phone call. They hit me up, asked me, "Can I come out?" And I went out to see what it was. But one of the things he kept saying was, "Yeah, like uh, the devil used the Bible to uh, 
control your ancestors. Wow. And, and you know, so it, it's this it is constant teaching of, you know, the Bible is for white people and, and this white Jesus. And so when you have these situations of race and all this stuff popping up crazy, man, Satan trying to stop the gospel from reaching the inner city. He wants to stop the gospel from reaching everywhere. But when you look at this situation now, he's trying to turn an entire generation of African-American people away from the gospel, mm. you know, by using a, a situation as race. And he, he wants to put that thought in people's head. So that's why as Christians, it's important for us, black, white, whatever we are, as I just mentioned in my class, to clarify that, ain't nothing wrong with saying, yeah, slave owners did use the Bible to control slaves, and they were in sin. They're wrong. Like, that's not God sanctioned. The gospel was in Africa uh, years before slavery, you know? Many years. Uh, Jesus wasn't white, you yeah. know? He wasn't white. There's nothing wrong with saying that stuff. But those are the things that we're going to run into in the inner city. But that's why I made it. I actually had a record on <laughs> uh, the mixtape at first called Black Jesus. Really? And I, I took it off. I took it off. What you going to do with it? I don't know, That's but I got it. I got it. I got it. It was on the mixtape, and I took it off because I, w I would rather have a conversation outside of the CD, you know. But one of the things that I, I, I told three different stories, and the last one was about this old lady that knew the gospel. Uh, in my head, she was black, and she her storyline was, you know, Jesus wasn't white, but when they come to my scene, it don't matter. But that's it, that's the world we living in right now. That's the time we living in. I made the record to connect with them people yeah. that's out in the street, and so they can hear some hope, and that they can see a person that's a Christian, that's African American, that's saying that Christianity is for you. It's for you too. Jesus is for everybody. You know what I'm saying? It ain't a white man thing. It ain't a black man thing. It it's a it's a soul. It's an eternal thing. It's a savior created thing. It, you know. So I want to get in front of the people, man. That my goal is to become a voice for them and not just a voice talking to them, you know? So it'll be a voice to talk to them and to talk for them, but not just at them. But heavy is the head, man, August the 14th. My way to interviews always be about stuff besides my album. <laughs> I'll leave that stuff to y'all rappers. Just come on here and talk about your record and your features. And since we talking about features, I got Scarface on the record. No, I'm just, <laughs> I do though, Scarface really is on the record though. Yeah.